Hey everyone, in this video we are going to learn how to clean and analyze large datasets in Stata. This is meant to be a compact tutorial that covers some of the most necessary manipulations we need to do while working with datasets. If you are preparing for a data task, for a research assistant or fellowship position, or just trying to get a quick and efficient orientation to data wrangling in Stata, this tutorial will be helpful for you. Just a quick overview of what we will cover in this video. So we will start by creating a made-up dataset by ourselves. Then we will see how to convert the data from a wide format to a long format. And then we will merge the two datasets using temp file. And then we will do all of these tasks that you can see already on the screen. So we have uh, status results window here and we have our do file here and I'm just going to execute the command from the do file and we're going to see the results here. So the first thing is to clear the workspace and then we have to set a global directory where we are going to store all of our data and results. So I have already uh, executed this line and set my global directory. And then after we set our global directory, we can create a folder where we will save all of the data sets that we create. So we can use this command make directory and then assign our root folder, which is our um, um, master folder. And then we can create a subfolder and name it data. Okay, so let's create two data sets to practice with. Uh, at first, let's set the observation number. So we will try to do our practice with a fairly large data set. So we set the observation number to 100,000 and we will set a seed number. So this is just uh, any random number that you want to set. So I've just picked 1023, you can pick any other number. So we are going to create a data set of uh, students exam scores along with the students age and country or maybe uh, we'll create subjects. So this is just a made up data set that we are going to do our practice with. So I'll generate a variable and give the variable the name age. So generate age and I'll just draw random numbers from a uniform distribution whose lower bound is 12 and upper bound is 25. So let's take a look at what we have just now generated. Here we can see we have a variable named age whose lower bound is 25, uh, sorry, lower bound is 12 and upper bound is 25. And these are just random numbers drawn from a uniform distribution. Now let's round the numbers. We want the age to be in uh, whole numbers or we want it to be it's in its nearest integer form. So we'll replace age and we'll use the command round. So we can uh, use the short form BR for browse. And now we have these in integers. Now let's create uh, scores for each student where the scores are between 10 and 50. So the lowest score is going to be 10 and the highest score is going to be 50. And we are going to round the numbers up to two decimal places. So generate score equals to random uniform lower bound 10, upper bound 50. And then once we do that, we're going to replace score equals to round and round what? Round the variable score up to decimal places. So this is how we tell Stata that we want to keep up to two decimal places. So I run this command. And then let's browse what we have. And now we have a new variable called score and we have them in two decimal places. All right, now let's create a student ID that includes the numbers and um, two character strings basically. Uh, we will use the command char character which corresponds to ASCII codes from 0 to 127. Extended ASCII codes are from 128 to 255. So basically this stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Uh, it's a 7-bit character where every single bit represents a unique character. So for our reference, uh, the ASC codes, ASCII codes 65 to 90, basically refer to the English alphabets A, B, C, D, uh, and goes all the way to Z. So we want to create student names, but uh, we want the first two uh, characters to be um, strings, and then we want to uh, add uh, numbers. 
So this is how we want to create um, unique names of students. So we are going to draw a random uniform number from 65 to 90 and then wrap it around in this function character. So let's say the random number generates 70 and then we will basically have what we will basically have is character 70. So then this is going to convert 70 ASCII code and return whatever uh, English character it corresponds to. So this is going to be our first character. This is going to be our second character. And then we are going to take the number of observation and convert it into a string. And we are going to put stack all of them together. And that is going to be the name of the student. So let's run this command. Let us also create another variable, which is the row number. And let's take a look at the new data set that we have created. So let's browse. And we can see that we have names where the first two characters are basically English letters. And then the next two characters are basically uh, the row numbers. So this is first row one, one second row two and then we have randomly generated characters. So this is how we can generate random numbers, including um, strings and texts. So now we have uh, student names, we have student age, and we have student scores in their exams. So let's generate three subjects. So for our practice, I'm going to generate three subjects, economics, maths, and physics. And since we have 100,000 observations, so let's say 35,000 observations are going to be for economics. And then remaining are going to be for maths and physics. And then we can sort it um, by the scores and then we can browse the data set. So we have sorted the data set by their scores. So the lowest scores come first. This is also sorted the names and the row numbers that there was before. And we can see that we have different subjects. And uh, we have wrapped them in uh, the double quotes. So this is how Stata understands that it's a string, not numeric. And this data set that we have just created, uh, so this format is called a long format data. So let's go back to the browse function and take a look at the data again so this kind of data is called long format data where each of the so for where under subjects we have economics maths and physics so instead if we had this data set in a structure where each of the column represented each subject let's say so one column for economics another column for maths another column for physics then we would call it a white data structure so now let's save the data. So we had already created a folder called data in our master folder. And then I'm going to save it uh, in the stat status default DDA format and give it the name data one. Now let's create a second data set that is in the wide format. In this data set, we would have the median scores of each subject. And uh, once we have two data sets, we're going to see how we can merge the two. So let's clear the memory set observations equals to one. So we are just going to have one observations in this particular case. Let's generate median econ, median math, median physics. And let's also generate an ID number, which uniquely identifies every observation. And let's take a look. So we have exactly one observation and we have the median scores. And let's say the median score for economics was 25, for mathematics was 29, and for physics was 30. And uh, we are uniquely identifying this one observation with the ID number one. So we just need a unique identifier for each of the rows because in this wide format, every row corresponds to one unique observation or one unique individual. So now let's save this data set as well. So I'm going to give it the name data2. So we have also saved this in our data subfolder in our master folder, which we have named root. 
now I'm going to move on to the analysis part so we are done with the data generation so same again I'm moving to a different do file right now so let's first open the data set where we had the median scores we can also look at the data using the list function given that the data is small enough if we have a large data set this will take up the whole screen so don't use list if you have a large data set we just only have one observation so i'm just using list here and we can see we have median economics maths and physics scores and we have an id number so, and this is the wide format and now we are going to convert it using the long format stata has a very handy function called reshape to convert data from long to wide format so we are going to reshape it into the long format and our reshaped variable is basically going to be median scores so we are going to give it the variable name med for median you can give any name you want the unique uh, each of the row is being identified uniquely um, here for in this case the unique identifier is the id and uh, this is for the categories of subjects right so j is going to be subjects and another important distinction is uh, these categories are named by as strings right so economics maths physics these are characters or strings say if we had uh, data on years so let's say we had family income by different years so we would have family income let's say 1990 family income 1991 family income 1992 and we wanted to convert it into long long data format in that case we wouldn't have to write this part string because it would understand that it's numeric but since the categories are not numeric but instead they're in string format i have to specify this particular uh, command with the string so let's run the reshape command and let's list the data again and we can see that stata has reshaped it into a long format now the number of observations has converted from one to three number of variables was four but now we have three variables and we can see it uniquely identifies so all of these observations correspond to id number one in our previous structure and we had this sub uh, cat uh, subcategory which is j by sub so it uh, names it sub and then it extracts the names media economics maths and physics and then it generates uh, the variable named median med and you know it converts it into this format great so now we have this data set into long format so now we can merge this smaller data set with the student scores that we had created earlier great so we will finish this video right here and we will start from merging two data sets in the next video thank you very much for watching see you in the next video if you like my videos and find them helpful then please support my work by subscribing to the channel